Well, I've got a word for you today, and I really believe it is from God, and it's, um, it's going to be empowered, and he's going to speak through it. So um, how about I pray first? It's always a good way to go. Heavenly Father, God, we just humble ourselves before you today, God. Um, God, we just thank you for our time of worship with you, Lord, this morning that uh, we continue on now as we speak your word, Lord, and um, just as a family here, God, we just want to open our hearts up this morning. God, I pray that you reveal things to us, God. Um, speak to us as only you can. Your word is alive and active, God, and I just pray, Lord, that it is full of power this morning, um, that you'll be able to speak to us individually, Lord, in relationship to us, what we need to hear, what we need to take from this, God, and um, Lord, so that we can become more like your perfect son and just keep stepping into our journey with you, God. We're just so appreciative, Lord. Um, it's an honour to worship you this morning. Uh, we're so grateful for who you are in our life, God. I just pray over everyone here this morning, God, that we receive this word. Amen. All said. All right. I was warned to print this up on a computer, but I'm a bit old-fashioned and uh, I've got my scribbly book. Roos, like, you're going to get lost all over the shop. I was like, I know what a wavy line like that means. And yeah, that's story time. That, you know, I'll work it out. So bear with me. Forgive this. I'm going to put my glasses on. Ruth sat on them. So <laughs> they, they don't really fit on my head. But I do need them to see. They'll probably fall off a dozen times. Do I look like a, a good-looking man? Yes. Yeah, let's go with that. Um, yeah, so... I guess if you're looking for a title this morning, I didn't clean these things, everyone's foggy, it's like I'm underwater, now I know what it's like to scuba dive in church. Um, I really hope this preach scratches an itch this morning, I was going to actually get like a big pole, and you know those back scratcher things, I was going to, oh Mrs C, how nice to see you, Uh, she's a teacher of mine, I'm still calling her Mrs C, but we'll get there, I was going to tape this scratchy stick onto a big pole, so I could hover it out over people if, if it was scratching an itch. And Ruth said, can that idea, that's terrible. That's not the Arise way. Um, so <laughs> there is no stick, you won't be threatened with something hovering above you, except God's presence, and it won't threaten you. Um, so yeah, I really want this word to encourage you. I want God to reveal to our hearts that there's so much more for us in Christ. Um, I'm going to get going, but a real quick disclaimer, just so you don't think I'm up myself or anything. This is for me as much as it's for anyone else. I'm really needing this so um yeah I'm owning it myself but what I I really wanted to say we weren't created and born again and we all know this we weren't born again to live lukewarm is it am I loud enough all good we weren't created and born again to live lukewarm lives even though God's given us free choice and we can go about doing sort of what we want in a in a way uh that's not entirely true um we were born for more we were actually created to be his workmanship and Um, be like Christ so we have something to step into Um, and I thought well where better to start let's go right back to the start and that scares some people like he's going to Genesis oh no but um, I sort of will but sort of won't I just wanted to look at why were we made Um, a pretty simple question and I I did the the normal human thing and went straight to Google and um, should have went to the Bible but I went to Google but I thought it was a pretty good Christian answer for us I'll just read it word for word. So, you know, you get those little arrows dropping down of people's questions they've asked. I love them. I get stuck on them for ages. But um, the first one I saw was, what was God's purpose for creating humans? And I thought it was a pretty good response. It said, he created people out of love for the purpose of sharing love. People were created to love God and each other. Additionally, when God created people, he gave them good work to do so that they might experience God's goodness and reflect his image in the way they care for the world and each other. So from that, basically, he created us out of love for the purpose of love and he gave us good works to do. Um, and then back in Genesis, we know we were created in God's image. Um, but even in the garden with Adam, he gave him a task. He gave him a purpose straight up. And every man here is like, oh, lawn care, (laughs) oh no. He started the first gyms mowing in that garden and um, (laughs) it didn't take long before Adam was like, I need a helper. (laughs) It's a lot of of garden to tend. Yeah, zero turns not cutting it. um, Yeah, so we got given a job. So we weren't just here to wander. We weren't here just to flake about. We were given a purpose and a task. And um, because God's the same yesterday, today and tomorrow, to make it relevant for now, Uh, We see in the New Testament that in our new life on this side of the cross, he also gave us a purpose. Um, And that was just before he left, he he spoke about the Great Commission. And um, that was Jesus 
giving us a task to do. So I'll read that. I'll get Matthew 28 verse 18 up on the big screens. Dual screens. I don't know where to look. I'm dizzy. I'll read it down here. I hope we can follow along. So this is the Great Commission that Jesus spoke about. Then Jesus came to them and said, All authority in heaven and on earth has been given to me. Therefore, go and make disciples of all nations, baptizing them in the name of the Father, the Son, and of the Holy Spirit, and teaching them to obey everything I've commanded you. And surely I'm with you always to the very end of the age. There's a couple of things we can take out of that great sort of verse, but um, I always like to think of it in a sort of a picturey way. And I think, you know, Jesus is there with his disciples, and you've got Peter and John there, maybe, and he says, teaching them to obey everything I've commanded you, and surely I'm with you always to the very end of the age. And I just picture like Peter there and he's like, God, I know you're with me till the end of the age, but please don't call me Shirley. (laughs) That's a bad joke. We'll just scrap that. That's not what we get out of that verse. What we do get is um, we get our marching orders, basically. Sorry, that was such a bad joke. We get our marching orders out of that. And, um, you know, it's the Great Commission. It's not a great suggestion. Um, Jesus commissions us. It's a command. He commands us. Um, And that's not whether if it fits our schedule, um, whether we feel good enough or whether we're up to it on a particular day or we're in a good mood. It's a command. It's a commission to go out, love one another, make disciples, build each other up. Um, Yeah, and this is how we honour him. We honour his request. His will be done on earth. And you know, often we think that, we say that on, on things we pray it, like, God, let your will be done in this. And so often God's like, well, I'll make sure my will's done, but I need you to do my will as well. And, um, you know, on earth as it is in heaven, there's no hate, there's no gossip, there's no backstabbing, there's none of that in heaven either. And sometimes God's will is also that our hearts have that change in them as well. And, um, yeah, he, want, he wants to work in our hearts as much as he wants to see his work going on in the earth. That's where the change comes. That's where the work comes out of um, and accomplishes his purpose. So that's how we honour him um, in answering this call. Um, I just thought, you know, for some of us, I know for me, I'll, I'll make this a little bit smaller because I read that verse and I go into that, I don't know which verse it is, he might be 19. He says, go and make disciples of all nations, go into all the world and... I've always glossed over that and thought, whew, that's just, that's a big task, go out into all the world, but we can make that a lot smaller, and just to help us, I was even thinking for myself, like, what is my world, what's my immediate world where I can go out to and have impact, and straight off the top of my head, I've got church family who I can help disciple, and you guys can help disciple me by encouraging and loving and lifting one another up. Um, I've got my work, where I can go to work and actually put a, an attitude in my mind and sometimes we all get to work and you know things stuff's hitting the fan and you know people can be stressed and angry and agitated and you actually know as a Christian okay I've got to come in I've got to be a peacekeeper bring a bit of a peace to this and uh, settle this atmosphere and I think that's something we can do by bringing God's love into our workplace uh, we've got family and friends you know we can make our worlds a little bit smaller than go out to the nations unless you are called uh, some people are lucky enough to be called to go overseas and and do the Great Commission in those places, that's awesome. But for most of us, our worlds aren't as big as that. And it's not as daunting to think, hey, I can do this within my family, my friends and and church. So just one way to look at it a little different. Um, So it can start in us right here. Encourage each other in faith. Disciple one another in love. Um, I'm sure you guys are the same. I want to see in myself and the Christians I walk with, people bringing the best of Jesus out in each other, not running each other down, not trying to look for ways to pull each other apart. We're Christians, we're of the same body, we're all for his cause. Let's lift one another up, let's build each other up and bring the best of Jesus out in each other. Um, I was talking to Ruth yesterday, I'll take these off, I probably look like I'm wearing glasses and they're slipping off, (laughs) I might be sweaty. But I was talking to Ruth yesterday and um, we were talking about Genesis and stuff and I got this picture of like God and, I didn't get like this spiritual picture, I thought about it, but God and Jesus and the Holy Spirit in, in heaven before they create and as they create human beings and it says it was good, they were pleased with us. I just think it must have been such an exciting time creating and um, there would have been so much joy and to see Jesus creating his own workmanship and pleased with it and you only have to fast forward the videotape or the um, Netflix show for younger people a little bit further and that very same God that was creating us and so pleased with us is hung on a cross and bleeding to death for his own creation and you think where 
where did we go wrong? You know, we got it so wrong and we have opportunity, even this side of the cross, to continue to do wrong by God, but he forgives us, his grace is sufficient, but he's called us in this commission to do better, you know, to love one another, to lift him up, and loving one another is loving Jesus. Um, I'm not getting lost yet, this is good. Is everyone else with me? No one's getting lost? Cool. So, so far, we know our purpose. Number one, our purpose, make disciples. Number two, we know our mission field. Family, friends, church, could be the world for some. So we have two things we already know. And I find like this is the part where a lot of Christians, including myself, can get a little bit stuck. What's going on? Something cool over there. Don't get distracted. Um, You know, this is where we can get run off course a little bit. We've got our task. We know our field. Go in there and do it. But sometimes... A lot of Christians, we can just meander through life from that point. I'm saved. My name's in the book of life. I'm forgiven. See you when I get there and just keep going along in this kind of mediocre that we're not even happy. I know we're not even fully feeling like we're doing God's work in it, but we just trudge through and take the hurt and take it all on to us and let it identify us. But, um, you know, I've had the same thing. Like, who am I to tell others about God? I'm the worst sinner in the room. I feel too bad to do it. Um, And I get that's legit stuff. I struggle with it. We all struggle with it. But somewhere along the line, if we want to look more than just a bunch of sheds around the area that talk about God but don't impact, then we've got to draw a line in the sand. Um, Ways to do that. And there's, there's so many ways. God's infinite. He has beyond our understanding. You know, Alan's been talking about how do we hear the voice of God in different ways. And I, I hear God through listening to Coldplay the other day. Um, I'm sure you guys are the same. TV, he's just not limited by anything. He's just at work in everything, but um, don't want to get off point. Uh, Some ways we can is to come into agreement with how God sees us. Um, I'll get 1 Peter verse 2 to 9. I think it's 2 verse 9 up on the screen. Yep, that's the one. This is how God sees us. He says, you're a chosen people, a royal priesthood, a holy nation, God's special possession. That's incredible that you may declare the praises of him who called you out of darkness into this wonderful light. So we kind of got this thing. As we come into, as we ask God into our life, we step into this new creation over here and we got the old over here. And I think sometimes we we touch into it and we are there. Spiritually, we're there. But in our human flesh, we come in, we come out as we please. Um, And that's one way to see how God sees us in that, you know, chosen people, royal, holy, his special possession, that makes us pretty valuable. That makes us pretty special. So the things we try and say over ourselves, like I'm not worthy, I'm not good enough, that's not of God. He would never put that on us. So we're putting that on. The devil is God's all about change and restoration. Um, The other way is to renew our minds. You don't have to really look it up because I think most of us know it, but Romans 12 um, says, do not conform to the patterns of this world, but be transformed by the renewing of your mind. Then you'll be able to test and approve what God's will is, his good, pleasing and perfect will. Um, I'll just read this. I was trying to sort of write this out how I would, but sometimes people do it so much better. So I actually stole this guy's thing, but I thought it really made sense and was simple. So I'll just read this to you. What does renewing of the mind mean? Simply stated, renewing your mind according to Romans 12 means interpreting life through the lens of God's word and the inspiration of the Holy Spirit rather than through the lens of your experience, woundedness, trauma, preferences or opinions of others. It's a fundamental shift towards seeing the world, yourself and others, God and especially what's possible from a kingdom perspective. It's making a daily, moment by moment choice to choose the mind of Christ which lives inside each of us as new creations rather than operating from our soulish mind the way we did before we were saved. That's awesome. I just realised I read that without glasses, so I must be getting healed on the spot. How good is this? God is good. Um, So we need to stop basing our value on what we've come from. We've come out of sin. There's brokenness, there's hurt, and it's not to discount that. Some people have had some really tough stuff, and there's no demeaning it, but we are born again new and we have to start claiming that newness so that we can step into it and fully own it um yeah jesus bought us at a price so that puts value on our life it cost him something he loves us with an undying love (coughs) pardon me i'll just have a quick drink play your mobiles for a quick second all right mobile phones down i'm back (coughs) 
Okay. So, yeah, just speak. I don't know. I'm not a master at all this. I'm figuring it out myself. But try and speak things over yourself. I'm a child of God. Um, I'm worthy. I'm of value. Rather than sitting in the old way, oh, no, I'm from a broken home. I'm from this, I'm that. Start accepting the way God's transforming your life. And wouldn't it be cool? Like, <clears throat> so often people are like, hey, where are you from? Or what's your story? And our story seems to all be, oh, I'm from this, I'm that, and I do this. and that. It's always pretty drudgy wouldn't it be awesome to meet someone like where are you from they're like I'm a child of God I have Jesus living within me man that would be inspiring if we all had that attitude coming out and we can uh, it's that mindset renew our minds start stepping in who we actually are who he who he died to make us so if we have a quick look at Ephesians 2 verse 1 it's titled made alive in Christ and I thought this was pretty good the first three verses sort of talk about the old way we were the struggle the sin And then it gets really good. But I'll read the struggly part first so that it seems better when we get to the good bit. So it says, Made alive in Christ. As for you, you were dead in your transgressions and sins in which you used to live when you followed the ways of this world and of the ruler of the kingdom of the air, the spirit who is now at work in those who are disobedient. All of us... All of us also lived among them at one time, gratifying the cravings of our flesh and following its desires and thoughts. Like the rest, we were by nature deserving of wrath. So that's the bad part. And some of the stuff you read in there that holds us into this old life is disobedience, it's um, selfishness, cravings, all this stuff that is of the devil. Then Jesus, literally, verse 4, just steps in like a prince in the night. I was going to say a thief, but he's not. He's He's the best. Verse 4 in Ephesians 2, verse 4 to 10. It says, But, so but because of all that stuff before, but because of his great love for us, God, who is rich in mercy, made us alive with Christ, even when we were dead in transgressions. It's by grace you have been saved. God raised us up with Christ and seated us with him in the heavenly realms in Christ Jesus. So it's only because of Jesus. It's nothing we've done. It's all on him. It's all his grace, his mercy. But I love that. Because of his great love for us, God, who is rich in mercy, made us alive in Christ even when we were dead. And we continue to sin. We can't can't be perfect this side of the cross, um, uh, this this side of the return. But one day we will be. And, um, you know, for now, we can step into this mindset, step into who we actually are without being perfect because God's grace covers that. His mercy is enough for that. Um, It goes on a few verses. I'll skip down a little bit here. Verse 10, I love this one too, because this just backs up God's purpose for us. He says all this stuff, this is what was bad, how I made you good with grace and mercy. And he lists through that. And then at the end he says for, so which is like, why did I do all this? For, in verse 10, we've got it up there. Man, Bailey, you're good. It says, for we are God's handiwork, created in Christ Jesus to do good works, which God prepared in advance for us to do. So he puts another nail back in the coffin and says, this is why I've done all this for you. So you can do good work. So you have a purpose and you are my handiwork. Um, His creation, which is really cool. Um, So his mercy has triumphed over judgment. We know that. He doesn't give us what we deserve. He gives us the life that he's paid for so that the best of us in Jesus can come out. Um, Yeah, like I said, he didn't design us to just walk around forgiven, looking for a finished tape to run through. There's work to be done here. There's, we can actually honour our God and Jesus um, properly down here. Um, yeah, I'll skip forward from that. Ephesians 4 verse 17. I'm really going through Ephesians. This thing was... I may as well have just read all of Ephesians, but I worried people would start leaving. So I've had Luke lock the door. <laughs> you will be released later. Um, Le- Ephesians chapter 4 verse 17. Um, it's titled Instructions on Christian Living. Um, okay, I'll just read it. That's the best way to go. Verse 17, it says, So I tell you this and insist on it in the Lord that you must... So he's pretty... I think it's Paul writing here. He's pretty um, insistent. I'll steal his word, but strong wording. I tell you this, I insist on it in the Lord. You must no longer live as the Gentiles do. So he's speaking about the Gentiles here in them not being saved in that sense they're the old life when he refers to the gentiles so you mustn't live like that any longer Uh, in the futility of their thinking they are darkened in their understanding separated from the life of god because of their ignorance um, that is in them due to the hardening of their hearts 
Having lost sensitivity, they have given themselves over to sensuality to indulge in every kind of impurity, and they are full of greed. That's, however, not the way of life you learned. So in that, there's a few things, there's a lot of stuff you could dig out of that, but there's so many things that show us what happens when we start living back over here in the old life. We lose sensitivity. Like Al's been talking about hearing God's voice, it gets harder to hear God's voice if we distance ourselves from it. Um, we get dark and all this stuff, it grabs onto us. So we've got to try and stay over in this new place that God created us to be in. You know, um, so some of that stuff, why get rid of the old? Well, it's pretty obvious. It's scary to stay in it. Um, stop holding on the old self because we lose sensitivity. We lose understanding and we distance ourselves from God if we stay over here. And so often we're like, why aren't I hearing God's voice? God, where are you? And I was just chatting to Mandy this morning and uh, I happened to say something I was talking about um, hearing God's voice. I know it might be going off topic a bit, but I love what Al's been saying about this. And I think for me in life, it hasn't been about rules and religion. The, the times when I've found God is when I've just needed God. And I'm sure you guys are the same. Like literally being like a child in his presence and said, God, do you still love me? Like it sounds like the dumbest question to the guy that is all love. His whole purpose is love. And I ask him these silly questions like, do you still love me? But he, that's when he just comes and comes so fast to get to me. And um, I don't know, off track a bit, but that's just be real with God, I think is, is a key point in your, in your search for him if you're not hearing from him, which we all don't at times. Okay. If you've hung on to a brokenness or an attitude for forever, because sometimes this stuff sticks, it's hard to break off. And if we keep staying over in this side here, it can really get a hold. We start to identify with it. Um, but I guess be encouraged that God, God of creation, almighty God wants us to change. Um, you know, we carry these attitudes like, oh, I'm just a moody character. Um, I'm grumpy by nature. Um, God loves me as I am. You know, of course he loves you as you are, but he still wants more for you. That's, that's his whole thing. He just wants more and more for each person because he loves you so much. He knows the gold he's put inside each of us and he wants to see it come out. Um, you know, so often we're like, I can't beat this sin. I can't break that habit. I can't do it. I can't do it. But like that verse before, there's a but. But God, he can do it. He can do all things. Um, he wants us to change. And I was thinking about this little thought, like, if God's desire for us is to change and he's the same yesterday, today and tomorrow, then we probably have to really get real and say, if God wants the change and it's not happening, then it's probably in me. Maybe I don't fully want the change. Maybe I don't fully want to go through what it's going to take to change or the hurt because there is cost. There's always going to be cost to changing. But um, if he wants it, I, I think we can trust God to be gentle with us, to love us through things and... Um, He's a loving father who, who can do that. So, um, yeah, I think that mindset shift, step in, want the change over your life. If you want it, God wants it too. That, that makes it possible. Um, so expose the devil's lies over you. Um, claim your identity back so that we can honour Jesus without restraint. It's nothing worse than carrying on to all this muck and all this stuff. And it's like, I'm really struggling, God to even worship because I don't feel worthy. We've got that restraint so holds us back and it's going to be an honest one. Maybe they'll turn the filming off. Um, but I went through a season a couple of years ago where I was actually struggling to put worship music on for a little while. I just couldn't get myself into that frame of mind to face God in a way. And um, I probably went a couple of months where it's just it was really hard. I'd do it, but it was a bit of a begrudging <laughs> put on and then it even got to points where I wouldn't and I remember one day I was at this this poor lady gee how do I have a job I'm at this lady's house working and um I went into a bedroom and I just felt I actually felt like Elijah I was like I feel like that Elijah character I'm out in the desert I've run away and now I'm on my knees and I don't know what to do but that's the best place to be sometimes because I just remember sh I had to shut a door because there might have been some sweat under my eyes I just we all know I sweat a lot um <clears throat> Yeah, I just, I felt a wreck, but I just put, I didn't even know what song it was. I just put worship on. I made a decision. I have to put worship on. And this first song come on, it just, it could, it could have been anything. It could have been Slim Dusty singing worship hits, but it literally just broke me. I just felt God's love again, just ways. He wants us to be vulnerable. He wants us to bend our knees. And I have to bend my knee all day as a carpet layer. It's rotten, but in a different way. He wants us to bow our hearts when we bend our knee. And um, 
be vulnerable, come before him in love because he wants change. He, he desires us to be restored and all we're made to be and there's no better feeling than feeling that non-restraint, to worship unrestrained and love him the way we're made to. Um, yeah, as I said, he wants it for you if we want it. I wrote this. I'm just going to read it. This sounds really dumb. This is my notes. It could be like a riddle. <laughs> no, don't. If he wants it for you, no, he wants it for you. So how if he, how if we want it, won't it? It just looks like this weird riddle. But anyway, <laughs> makes sense somewhere. Um, look, we've got a world and a community, a church, a family that needs God's love. Let's call out the devil and his lies over us. Let's shake it off in Jesus' name. Let's step into more of the life Jesus planned for us. Um, yeah, I'll sort of wrap this up. I might even get the band up. I reckon we finished with a worship song. Um, he deserves that. We'll give him some worship. It's not a long one today, but hopefully you've got something out of it. But, um, you know, the kingdom of God is driven by purpose. Um, and God's purpose is love. That's what his purpose is, to love, for us to love. Um, you know, the world's not spinning for no reason. We're not going to wake up tomorrow and the world's spinning just because it's spinning. It's literally the stars, everything. It's all hanging in place for one reason, and that's for God to get his glory. You know, for his great love not just to be felt by you, but for it, for it to be felt through you. I wrote an asterisk, get this one, because I thought that was a good final point. I'll say it again. It's all for his purpose, his glory. For his great love, not just to be felt by you, but for it to be felt through you. Um, in 1 Timothy, you don't have to look it up, but it, Paul writes about advancing God's work. And in verse 5, he says, the goal of this command, and we know what the command is, that's the commission, the goal of this command is love. So it all comes down to love. Um, so yeah, in summary, God, he has a purpose, and that's his glory. Um, we have a purpose, that's his glory. Makes it pretty simple. The way to fulfill his will, to give him glory, is to answer this call of his, the commission. To love him first, to love one another, and make disciples. And we make disciples by loving one another, building one another up. It's just some school notes on the back of that. That'll do. <laughs> Thanks so much for listening, guys. Um, I hope God's speaking to you through this. Um, yeah, I'll pray and let's, let's just worship and then have an awesome day, an awesome week. Change their mindsets. I'll be trying to as well. Let's step into more of who we are in God because we're all pretty awesome people. Heavenly Father, God, we just thank you, Lord, that, um, God, your way is love. God, your command is love. And Jesus, that you've brought this family together here, Lord, this um, beautiful bunch of people to lift one another up, encourage one another, God. And we thank you that Arise is such a, a beautiful place to come. And Lord, we just want to see more of you here. We want to um, be people that just lift one another, see the God in each other, Lord, the gold, and just speak it out, Lord. Look for um, words for one another, God. Uh, really be about loving and lifting you up and let's see what you can do in this community and in our worlds father we're excited to co-work with you um, we're just thankful more than anything to be your sons and daughters um, that you did create us lord that you then went to the cross and died for us because you loved us so much and um, you still want to just restore us and love us back into your arms so we just give you all the glory, Lord. We continue to just want to be people that worship you and honour you with our lives, Father, as best we can. And when we get it wrong, we thank you so much for your grace. Um, yeah, amen.